Thursday nights and be able to meet together and this will be the last Thursday night for uh, this present year. Next Thursday will be uh, Christmas Eve and then we usually don't have a Bible study between that and uh, the new year. So we'll be starting again in the new year, God willing, and we'll continue our thoughts there on Thessalonians. Uh, but we trust tonight afresh as we meet together around God's word and finish our thought there uh, in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. Uh, that has been a help and a blessing and I trust these Bible studies uh, have been a help and a blessing to you and to your own Christian life and Christian experience even when we haven't been able to meet it was good to see many and I know it's been encouragement to me to see many looking on and appreciating the Bible studies and appreciating uh, God's word and the important thing in these days that we're in and going through is to simply uh, get to know God and get to know his word because his word will always bring help and courage, uh, encouragement and blessing uh, to us. So thanks for joining in during the year uh, with these Bible studies and we trust they have been a help and a blessing to you. Uh, so remember this is the last one for this year and God willing we'll be starting again in uh, the new year uh, to turn to God's word. Our Sunday morning uh, services will continue uh, at half past 11 down in the church. Uh, at the present, uh, the church is open, uh, but we, we don't know what's ahead. Uh, but as I say many times, it's good to know who holds uh, the future. So 11.30 there on the Sunday mornings, we'll still be putting it up on Facebook and YouTube, but that will be at half 11 as well. So if you want to look on, if you're not feel uh, that you're able to come out to church, please do look on and do enjoy the fellowship, enjoy uh, the encouragement uh, there. That's all the announcement. There will be some uh, different services on over Christmas and we'll be letting you know as the, the time uh, progresses, God willing. We'll go down to prayer and then we'll go down to God's word together. Our loving and our gracious Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you again that we can gather together. We do thank you for uh, these times we can meet together around your word. We thank you for your word has been a blessing and a help and a challenge to us. We thank you that your word is always quick and it's always powerful. We thank you that it is your word and we do thank you for the relevance of your word. We thank you for this past year, Lord, when we've been able to study your word. And although it's been different in a different format and a different different way we thank you still we're able to meet around your word together so we pray lord you continue to bless your word uh, we pray lord you continue to lift up your name we thank you tell us if i the lord jesus christ be lifted up i will draw all men unto me and lord we just pray in these days you'll help us and encourage us as we endeavor to lift up your name uh, to a needy land and to a needy world we thank you afresh for just being able to meet together tonight and we pray lord you'll bless us now as we turn to your precious word we pray lord that your word will be precious to us and lord that you'll illuminate the pages of your word and as we bring the these final few thoughts from this portion that there'll be a help and a blessing and a challenge to our lives our lives lord we just long that our lives will be led closer into you lead us on further nearer still nearer and that's our very prayer so come and have your own way and bless us we pray because we ask it in your lovely name amen amen Folks, I trust that you have your Bibles with you and turn with me to 2 Thessalonians uh, chapter 1 
and we'll take time to read the whole of the chapter just in closing it's the last uh, couple of verses we're going to look at uh, to finish off with and then we'll be meeting uh, for a time of prayer as well and uh, it's good to be able to pray and it's good to be able to bring these things uh, before the Lord together we need the Lord and we need the Lord's help and we need the Lord's blessing uh, upon our lives in these days so uh, second Thessalonians chapter 1 and we'll take time to read the whole of the chapter Paul and Silvanus and Timotheus unto the church of the Thessalonians in God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ grace unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is meet, because that your faith groweth exceedingly, and the charity of every one of you all toward each other aboundeth, so that we ourselves glory in you in the churches of God for your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations that ye endure which is a manifest token of the righteous judgment of God, that ye may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God, for which ye also suffer, seeing it as a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. And to you who are troubled, rest with us, when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels, in flaming fire taking vengeance on them that know not God, and that obey not the gospel, of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power, when he shall come to be glorified in his saints and to be admired in all them that believe, because our testimony among you was believed in that day. Wherefore also we pray always for you that our God would count you worthy of this calling, and fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness and the work of faith with power that the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you and ye in him according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. And we do thank the Lord for the reading of his uh, precious word and we trust uh, it will be a blessing to us now as we just bring a few thoughts from it. Uh, chapter 1 is doing is really dealing with the encouragement of suffering and uh, it's wonderful that even in the midst of suffering we can take encouragement and we can take blessing uh, from that and there's a number of little things that we have uh, been looking at we looked at first of all the encouragement of praise and uh, Paul as he looked in verses 1 to 4 he saw many things that were happening in the lives of the believers and that will always bring help and that will always bring encouragement it will always bring blessing as God as as other Christians see and as God sees his own people uh, growing and going forward in their Christian life it always brings blessing we look to the first part of verse 3 their faith uh, was growing and it's important that our faith is growing in these days because we we need our faith to grow their love was abounding they had a great love for God and they had a tremendous love for one another their patience <coughs> excuse me in verse 4 was increasing and we saw their patient endurance or, or your patient perseverance. As they persevered on, their patience grew each and every day. They knew what it was to have perse persecutions. They knew what it was to have trials and tribulations and all of the difficulties. But yet God was working all these things out. And it's good to see that God is at work in the days we're living in. And we, we, we looked at a number of other things. The second thing that we looked at, sorry, we missed, uh, missed out there, their testimony was helping others. And I think that's the important thing in our Christian lives and our Christian experience, that our testimony is a help to others. First of all, we have a testimony. It's important that we have a testimony to God's saving power. And it's important that we have a testimony to God's keeping power. Not only that he saves us, but he keeps us and that he leads us on. Our, our main emphasis is to be bright, shining lights. The, 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 the scriptures tells us that we are the light of the world. And it tells us, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father 
which is in heaven. Ye are the salt of the earth. So we're there as light to bring a, a, a light out to darkness. And we're there as salt to bring a flavor and a savor of Christ. So that's the challenge to us. To be salt and light in this world we're living in. The encouragement of praise. Uh, the encouragement of promise in verses 5 to 10. Uh, their reward. Uh, in verse 5 we looked at here it says which is a manifest token of the righteous judgment of God that ye may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God which ye also suffer uh, and this was one of God's purposes in, in allowing their suf uh, suffering it did not suggest that their suffering uh, earned them the right to go to heaven but you know folks for those who know and love the Lord the greatest th time ahead and the greatest thing ahead is that heaven is our home and he's gone to prepare a place for us and he's going to take us there to be with him so that's the important thing for us to realize that there's a place prepared for the child of God the reward one day they will be with him in heaven and that's their great reward their recompense uh, God will recompense affliction to the lost and he will recompense uh, rest to the saved and that little thought we looked at we're not going to go into it again but he says i will repay and the reality here in these verses he, he says here in verse 8 in flaming fire taking vengeance on them that know not god and obey not the gospel and that's the problem for those who who know not god for those who obey not the gospel one day they will have to uh, repay uh, and God will repay them and God will deal with them uh, the rest there in, in the first part of verse 7 and verse 10 it says and to you who are troubled rest with us isn't that a wonderful thing our God will give rest to his children the word rest here as we looked it means relief it means release it means to be to be not under pressure and that's a wonderful thing because we live in a world now where we, 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 there's very little relief for the Christian. There's very little release at times. They can be always under pressure. There's always something new ahead. But you know, we can be pressed upon measure as the scripture says. But yet the wonderful thing that for the child of God, they will know what it is to have rest. Uh, and, and the second little thought we brought from that is, is that our God will not only uh, give rest to his children, but there in verse 9, our God will punish all others who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. And folks, the reality here is, is there is everlasting punishment from the presence of the Lord eternal destruction everlasting destruction eternal judgment and folks some have have said it means temp temporary suffering that's not what it means some have said it means total annihilation that's not what it means it means they will suffer forever and forever and forever and and that's the reality Folks, there will be everlasting punishment from the presence of the Lord, from the glory of his power, and it will be forever and forever. So Paul encouraged his friend with, with praise, encouraged his friend with promise. And now we, we moved into the thought, the encouragement of prayer in verses 11 and verse 12. And their future prospect. Their future prospect of, of where the Christian was going and what the Christian was going into brought great help. And it brought the saints in the place of prayer. It says here in verse 11, wherefore also we pray always for you. You see the wonderful thing is they knew what it was to get to the place of prayer. They knew what it was to spend time in prayer. And folks, that's the wonderful thing. We must never neglect a present responsibility because of a future hope. We must never say, listen, I know where I'm going. I know, I know what's ahead of me. So I have no responsibility here. Folks, we have responsibility to witness. We have a responsibility to live the Christian life. And we have a responsibility to pray. And every Christian should, be, should take up their responsibility. Isn't that why the hymn writer said, Am I a soldier of the cross, a follower of, a la of the Lamb? 
And folks, we need to be a soldier of the cross in the days we're living in. We need to be a follower of the Lamb. And there were three concerns highlighted in Paul's prayer. Their worthiness. There in verse 11 it says, Wherefore also we pray always for you, that our God would count you worthy of this calling. Folks, we need to be worthy of our calling as a Christian. There, if you go back to verse 5, it says that ye may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God. In verse 11, it goes on the word worthy again. In other words, that he would make you worthy of your calling. That he would make you worthy of the kingdom of God. To give you the continual supplies of grace. What he's saying here. Without which you would be unable to fulfill your vocation. Or you would be able to fulfill your, your calling. Folks, we're called to serve. We're called to do something for the Lord. And folks, we need to be found worthy. And we need to be found doing. We are to be worthy of our calling. That's really what it's saying here. And that's the great challenge to you and to me. As I said last week, just as I was finishing off, a Christian by nature and not by name only. And that lovely little quotation that we finished with last week is this. Trials do not make a person. They reveal what a person is made of. And that's the most important thing that you and I can realize. Trials do not make a person. But they do reveal what a person is made of. In other words, what are you made of? You know, you've often heard the saying, you see your true colors shining through. And folks, the reality is you see that because you see that they are worthy. God knows our hearts even before we're tried. You know, there's nothing unknown to our God. He knows you inside out and upside down. He knows every little thing about you. But I suppose there's something we do need to ask. Do we really know our own hearts? The scripture says the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know them? You see, God knows our hearts, but sometimes we don't know the depths that are in our own hearts. But can I ask you a question? Do others truly know what you are worth? You know, sometimes it takes people to leave this scene of time before you see their worth. And you know, down through the years, my life has been touched by many Christians who've left this scene of time, maybe insignificant as far as the great preachers and evangelists are concerned. But yet they were faithful in prayer. Yet they were faithful in worship. Yet they were faithful. And folks, they were worthy. And you know, it's only when, when they've left this scene of time that you realize that, that they were worthy. And they were worthy of their calling. And we need to pray that God will, will build our worth. And that he'll make us more valuable Christians. Because of the trials and the tribulations and the difficulties that we have endured. That we shall come forth as gold. Their worthiness. The second little thought here in the second part of verse 11, their walk. It says here, and fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness and the work of faith with power. If you have the NIV translation, it says this, that by his power he may, he may fulfill every good purpose of yours and every act promoted by your faith. He may fulfill every good purpose of yours. In other words, every good purpose within your heart and within your life, that may be fulfilled. And every act promoted by your faith. In other words, every act of faith where you have held on in faith, that it will be lifted up to the Lord. You see, godly char character will always lead to godly conduct. And that's the reality for you and me. Godly character will lead to godly conduct. You see, Paul prayed that they might have a strong character. He prayed that they might have a resolute character. He prayed that someone once said that you might have a steely character. Because that's what he wanted. He wanted the Christian to have a strong, resolute, steely character. 
excuse me, character. He longed for them to be empowered by God and to do the purpose that God had for them to do. You see, our walk needs to be a walk of obedience. Our walk needs to be a walk of service. And it will not spring from effort of our own. It will not spring from the talents which we have because everybody has talents. But it needs to spring from God's power as we trust him in all and as we trust him for all. God's power working in us, God's power working through us and enabling us to be the Christians that he longs for us to be. You see, Paul had linked faith and love there in verse 3. And he brought faith and he brought love together. You'll see faith groweth exceedingly and the charity of every one of you. There he brings faith and love together. Now in verse 11, he's bringing something else. He's linking it with power. Wherefore also we pray always for you that our God would count you worthy of this calling and fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness and the work of faith with That everything will be fulfilled, but it will be fulfilled with power. That the power behind you is far greater than any task that is ahead of you. And as we continue to believe in God in our lives, he will give us the power for daily living. One of the the commentaries I read put it like this. It said, believe and receive. In other words, we believe, we trust in God, and then we receive. He gives us the power we need to live that Christian life. And you see, we cannot be victorious in tribulation if we're trusting in our own strength. Because we will fall. But we can be victorious in tribulation through trusting him. Because he will give us the power to go on in and through that tribulation. You know, the hymn writer, and we always go back to it, trust and obey. For there's no other way to be happy in Jesus than to simply trust and obey. And what he's saying here, as far as our walk is concerned, we trust God. And he will give us that power that we can live that Christian life. That our Christian walk is worthy. We're worthy of our calling as a Christian. We have a worthy walk. And that's the reality here. That's why Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. Many of you will know those two lovely verses off by heart. It says, trust in the Lord with all of your heart. He's not talking about a little bit or a small bit or or, or a partial bit. He says, trust in the Lord with all of your heart. What are we not to do? Don't lean upon your own understanding. You see, for you and me many times in our lives, we long to lean upon our our own understanding. Listen, I understand, I know, that's what I'm leaning on. He tells us not to do that. We're not to lean upon our own understanding, but in all our ways, in every way that we go, in every path that we take, on every street that we walk, is what he's saying here. In all those ways, Acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. You see, Paul longed for God's people by their faith to be simply able to receive the power needed to endure suffering and to glorify God. You see, it's not only to get through in the day of suffering, in the day of trial, in the day of tribulation. But it's to get through in a way that will bring glory to God. And release that power that we need to be able to go through in that situation in our walk. Their worthiness. We worthy of the calling. Our walk with power. And the third little thought here and the last little thought to finish off in verse 12. Their witness that the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified. Here we're back to glory. Glorifying God may be glorified in you. You see, what's the reality? Is that the name of the Lord will be glorified in your life and in my life. That as we live out our life for him each and every day, as we live out our our witness for him, that he will be glorified. 
You see, it's not to receive the glory to man. It's not to receive the glory to a religion or a denomination or, 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 or whatever. But it's to receive the glory to the name of the Lord. That the name of the Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you. In my life. That he's going to be glorified. Isn't that what the little chorus says? In my life, Lord, be glorified. Be glorified. In my life, Lord, be glorified today. That should be the reality of, of your life and mine. That he will be glorified. And ye in him. In other words, he's going to be glorified in you. And you're going to be glorified in and because of him. The only way, folks, that, that our life will make any difference is if it's given over to God. And, folks, as we give our lives over to him, he will take our lives and he'll use it. And he will make it a, a blessing and, and, and a real blessing to us. And he'll make it a blessing to his own witness and to his own life. That's the wonderful thing. According to the grace of our God, and the Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, he'll give you the grace that you need to be able to go on. If you go back to verse 12, or verse 10, sorry, you will see that Jesus will be glorified in his saints. He said, when he shall come to be glorified in his saints and be admired of all them that believe. Folks, he said, when glorified in his saints, when they return with him. But we can see in verse 12 that he will also be glorified in their lives. One day he's coming back with his saints and he's going to be glorified. But before that he's saying, listen, I just simply long to be glorified in your life and in your lives today. Can I ask you the question as we finish off this passage, as we finish off another year, is the Lord being glorified in your life? You see, unbelievers sadly blaspheme his name. If I was to if I was to 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 ask you how many tonight have heard the Lord's name blasphemed today, there's not one of us wouldn't put our hand up to say, Yes, I've heard it. And sadly, sometimes you're in somebody's company and you hear it again and again and again and again. But you know what does the believer do? The believer will bless the name of the Lord and will always seek his glory and folks that's what I trust at the end of this year that we'll endeavor to do as we go into another year to endeavor to seek his glory in our lives each and every day the wonderful things that we can notice from verse 12 is that believers who glorify Christ is likewise glorified in Christ you know, once we glorify Christ, we are glorified in Christ. There in verse 12, it says that Christ may be glorified in you and ye in him. How can this be done? The last part of verse 12 says, according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, grace and glory always go together. You can't have one without the other. You can't get away without having grace and then glory. And you can't have glory without grace. Folks, I want you to turn with me to a few little portions just in closing in your Bible. Psalm 45. Psalm 45. And, and verses 2 and 3. And it's bringing grace and glory together. Verses 2 and 3 says this of Psalm 45. Thou art fairer than the children of men. Grace is poured into thy lips. Therefore God hath blessed thee forever. Gird thy sword upon thy thigh, O most mighty, with thy glory and thy majesty. Grace is poured into thy lips with thy glory and thy majesty. Go over to Psalm 84. And there in Psalm 84 and verse 11, you will see here it says, For the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them who walk uprightly. 
The Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. See, he's given the two of them together. No good thing will he withhold from them who walk uprightly. And finally, just the last little verse there going into the end of the, the New Testament there in, in 1 Peter chapter 5. And in 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 10. This is what it says. But the God of all grace, who had called you unto his eternal glory by Jesus Christ, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you. The God of all grace, who had called you unto his eternal glory. What is he going to do? He said he's going to perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. That's what God can do. His grace and his glory. As we receive his grace, we reveal his glory. Folks, the wonderful thing here in closing, there is rest for those who trust in Christ. There is rest for those who seek to live for his glory. For the Christian, can I say in closing, the best is yet to come. That's why Paul said in Romans 8 and 18, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time, they're not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. It's not tremendous. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time, they're not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. And folks, we thank the Lord for this little portion of scripture. And I trust that over this uh, past year that this, these little thoughts have been a help and a blessing. They've been encouraging to you. And you know, God's grace is always there for every situation. And God longs to be glorified in your life. And he longs to glorify your life in the world around. And may we be in the place that he's able to do that. Amen. And we trust God will bless his word to our hearts. Folks, we'll go down to a time of prayer. I trust you'll be able to stay behind in your own homes afterwards uh, just for a time of prayer together, even if it's just a few minutes, even if it's just five minutes or ten minutes. It's tremendous uh, the need of prayer in these days. And we do pray that God will hear and that God will answer prayer. Do pray uh, against this COVID coming back. I know many are saying that it's it's gone away, we're back out, uh, but there's a lot saying that it could come back. So do pray uh, that these tests are going well. We pray that there's even people getting uh, the vaccination now. Uh, we pray there won't be any side effects, uh, but we do pray. Uh, that God will bless and God will undertake. Pray for pro continued protection. And do pray for, for the work of God. Pray for the church. Pray for mission organizations. Pray for those involved in Christian work. And there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of uh, I suppose, unease at the minute. Uh, we'd love to get back and just start back and just start working away. And it's not easy to do that. Pray that God will, will come and this, this land of ours and the world as a whole will settle and we pray, Lord, that opportunities will continue, they'll open up. We pray that people who've maybe heard sermons and different things online, uh, you'll see them coming out to our fellowships. We'll be able to start mission again. And uh, just pray that we'll be able to start up children's clubs, youth clubs, uh, uh, that'll be a blessing uh, to so many others. Do remember the sick as well. And we pray for just healing. Uh, pray for those who mourn, uh, that God will uh, be with them and help them and strengthen them at this time. And do pray for uh, many of our mission organizations. We do continue to remember the work of the Faith Mission, uh, CEF, uh, the Irish Evangelistic Band, IBI, Faith, Mich uh, Faith Mission Bible College there in Edinburgh too as they finish off. So there's so much going on. I know that many of you have many mission organizations uh, that you pray for. Uh, pray that God will move in our land. Uh, pray that God will move through our ministries and pray that God will move through us and that God will use us and bring glory to his name. 
in the days we're living in. So let's pray, and I trust you'll be able to pray a while together yourselves. Our loving and our gracious Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you again for the privilege you have of being able to meet together. We thank you for the great uh, ministry of your word, and we thank you that your word is a lamp unto our feet, a light unto our path. Thank you for dividing up your word to us. And Lord, we just thank you that even times around your word have brought help and encouragement and has brought tremendous comfort to us because your word leads, guides, and directs us every step of the way. We thank you for the place of prayer. We thank you we can come before you in prayer any hour of any day. We thank you, one in the heavens who is attentive unto our cry. And we thank you that we have one who hears and wonderfully answers prayer. We do pray for the work of our churches in these days. And Lord, we just thank you that they're back open again. Uh, we're back to having fellowship. And we pray, Lord, we'll see your people coming out. I know there are many who are maybe afraid. They're maybe wondering what's ahead. But we just pray, Lord, that you'll help us to just trust in you. We're not to think upon our own understanding, but in all our ways just acknowledge you and allow you to direct our path. We pray, Lord, that on, on the Sunday, Lord, we'll know your hand upon us. We'll know your blessing. We'll know your leading, guiding. We'll know your word to our hearts. And we pray, Lord, for those who help and take part in the service, Lord, that you will wonderfully be with them. Lord, our chief aim is to glorify our God. And Lord, our chief aim is to meet together. And Lord, that's where we're happiest. That's where we're blessed. That's where we fellowship. And that's where we've warmed. And we just pray, Lord, that you'll, you'll open up our churches, Lord. And we'll be able to get back to true fellowship and true worship as we gather together in your name. We pray for those who are unwell at this time. We pray for healing. We pray for those, Lord, who mourn. We pray that they will be comforted. And we do remember, Lord, the work of many mission organizations up and down our land. We thank you for the work of the faith mission. We pray you lead and guide and bless them. We think of the work of... Uh, of the IEB and Lord just lead and guide and direct them in their different ministries and we do remember the work of CEF amongst the boys and girls and we, we thank you for, for many of the way, main ways in these days that we're, we're able to get the gospel across. We thank you for, 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 for YouTube, we thank you for Facebook that we're, we're able to put up sermons and listen to sermons on. We thank you Lord for, for different ways we can reach boys and girls and young people and men and women with the wonderful message of the gospel. And we do pray, Lord, for, for just even a phone call in these days. We thank you, Lord, and help us just to encourage one another and to help one another and to bless one another. We look to you, Lord, and we, we pray, Lord, as we go into prayer now, that you will lead, you will guide, you will direct. You will have your own perfect way amongst us. And, Lord, it's to God be the glory, great things he had done, because we ask it all in your lovely name. Amen.